ready. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. We're here with another episode of Mad Men. Hopefully you guys are ready. We're gonna just gonna jump in. No long intro this time. <laughs> All right, so you already know what to do. If you wanna watch more episodes of Mad Men, you wanna watch them early, check out the Patreon, check out the original channel. Links are down in the description. Links are down in the description. <laughs> Let's jump in, man. I'm out of here. See you guys for the review. Sticking your face into a can of nuts. Just try and stick your face into a can of nuts. Just try and stick your face into a can. Are in Lakers, New Jersey, watching as the great airship Hindenburg attempts to tie off its mooring mass, and oh my God, she suddenly burst into flames. Oh God, look at the size of it. It's horrible. Oh, the humanity. <laughs> Damn, who is that? Get a wider lens, right? We want to shoot her in cinema fat. Hey, Jimmy, uh, what do you say we take a little break? Open your mouth, sweetheart. I want to see if Geppetto's building a fire in there. Just for your information, this guy's laughing over here. Why did he do that? No. That seems a bit personal, That's my guy. That's because he looks like a little boy. I guess. Is that why you entered? Reminds me of Monty Cliff. Bro, what is wrong with the these sun, people, bro? Learning how to ride so he can worm his way into the upper crust. I have to get my purse. No, I'm not going anywhere. We have to meet her. Mrs. Draper, Mrs. Carson, this is Tara Montague, my fiance. The they make fun of me. We don't. That would be cruel. Well, I've done plenty of things for him, and I'd love to continue doing so. Please meet you. Think she's about right. I spend too much time here. I actually dreamt about him. I think it was him. Or a version of him that could ride. Mr. Draper, Mr. Sterling and Ben Cosgrove are here to see you. Ken. Bad news. So bad, I don't feel like telling you, Cosgrove. We were shooting Jimmy Barrett for Utz, and... Don't pussyfoot around, just tell him. Mr. and Mrs. Schilling made a surprise visit to the set, and they got the full Jimmy Barrett treatment. I don't care that you drink, Freddy, but it's interfering with your job. Whoa. Only an idiot would put Jimmy Barrett in a room with her. No visits. How bad was it? He called her the Hindenburg. And uh, he said something about the whale and Pinocchio. I stopped it right away. So what we're dealing with here is you failed to control Jimmy Barrett and you failed to control Mr. and Mrs. Utz. So maybe both of you aren't suited for these tasks. Mr. Phillips is here. Perfect. Someone needs to talk to Jimmy. Well, I'm sure he'll feel real bad about it tonight and give her a call. Don, can you work him over? Jimmy Barrett is a known quantity. Don's going to fix it. He knows what that nut means to us and what us means to us. I'm going to talk to the shillings, then I'm going to explain the facts of life to Jimmy. That'll work. A guy like that must know how to make a charming apology or he'd be dead. Stand. I'd like to find a way not to be cruel, but I don't think it'd be serving either one of us. Are you firing me? Oh, no. It's nice to see that you care about something. I think you're not suited for this job. What did I do? In addition to being incompetent, you threatened my reputation, and not just today. Mr. Draper, I try to cover for you all the time. You do not cover for me. You manage people's expectations. Can you be more specific? You really want that? No, I guess not. You're not suited for this job. Stick to the switchboard. Please tell Miss Holloway on your way out. Yes, Mr. Draper. That's just so wrong. Find a way not to go home. You've been trying hard to do the job, but it's hard to, to it's it's so hard to be a secretary for somebody who's constantly out. It's like manage people's expectations. All right. Hey, he's not um he's not here right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying is I mean The problem is nobody knows where you're out is like half the time when they're not there. It's just like, you know what I mean? 
that's confusing. You can't. No, I'm not gonna give you that one, Don. That that was. Nah, she was trying to do a a very. Is 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 hard to manage people's expectations about you, Don. I'm not even gonna kid it. Half the time you're not in the ha in the office. Nobody knows where the hell you are, and you miss something critical, and then you blaming your secretary. Right? That's not cool. Cause did we don't you don't have you know what I mean? Y'all didn't have cell phones during this time. In no capacity whatsoever. So there's no way to reach you. I think they could be. Do they have beepers back then? Do they have beepers? I don't even know, bro. But at the end of the day, there's no way to reach you when you're out and about. You were watching a movie while something important was going on. And you wanted to manage people's expectations around that? Like, what? I mean, she told them what? They told her, hey, he's not in the office right now. What do you, what do you want me to do? I don't know where he is. Like, no, nah, I can't give you that one, Don. Come here a lot, do you? Not if everything is running smoothly. So buy me a drink. I think there's been plenty of drinking here. Great. So let's go talk to him. There's no reason for that. Talk to his manager. How can I help you? I've seen the man sober. He's not funny. This is Barrett. Bobby. He can come in here with vomit in his pockets for all I care. But these people are his benefactors. Like the Medici's of Florence. They're patrons of his art. The Schillings were very excited to see their favorite comedian. Then they know that being picked on by Jimmy Barrett is a compliment. No one was laughing. <laughs> That's not what I heard. I'll tell you what. They're in the big city for the weekend. Why don't they just go out and buy a thicker skin? Wow. In fact, I'm pretty sure he already hates you. Really? Some glib ad man in that suit, cigarette perfectly in hand, not a hair out of place, here to tell him he's been a bad boy? Well, he has been. He has to know that you're a fan and that he knows more than you and that he's got a shot with your wife, girlfriend, both. Wife. Let me drive you over. <laughs> Give up, will you? It's raining. There it goes. Hi, Daddy. Hi, Daddy. Hey, you. How are you? Weren't you afraid you'd get Jimmy? No, I wanted to invite you both to dinner. Monday night. A command performance. I was thinking Lutess. It will be formal. Can you get him there? If that's what you want. What do you want? It's that kind of phone call, is it? Where are you? In my home. With my children. I like being bad and then going home and being good. Actually thought he was getting better. Nope. Let's fall right back into the trap. When I was talking on stream the other day and I was talking about the, um, the challenges that we have as men. And I think a lot of times when people see like red pill content and stuff like that on the internet, you know, they, they automatically just go to the extreme and is part of the red pill. You know what I'm saying? That's part of the red pill that I just, I can't mess with because I think that the challenge for men, especially when they're in a committed relationship is not, you know, just because we were made to spread our seed, you know, we were made to, you know, be with multiple women, the, the, you know, that you can miss me with that logic because it, it, it doesn't make sense to me. Um, the reason why marriage is a commitment, the reason why, you know, when you're in a relationship, it should be one my Yes. You know what I'm saying? You ask any man if they would, if they, if they had a wife that was just a wife, 
right? And she's okay with you sleeping around, you know, from the get-go. Of course, most men is going to take up that opportunity. Maybe not some, maybe not everyone, but most men is going to take up that opportunity to do that. Um, I think the reason why marriage is so sacred, let me get to my point, is because it's a challenge for both. It's a challenge towards men and it's a challenge towards women. I'm going to speak on the challenge for men. The challenge for men is to not be sleeping around. It's the biggest challenge that we have because we are so naturally inclined to have sex with anybody else. With it, we, you know what I'm saying? With, with, with every woman in the world and, and not bat an eye and still be able to love, um, still be able to love your wife. Right. Because it doesn't really mean, it doesn't mean, you know, casual sex don't mean under men. Right. It's, it's just what it is. It is just another girl. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we just want to bust a nut. But I think that's the challenge for us, though, to stay faithful. I think that's one of the biggest challenge for men in relationships is to stay faithful. That's our challenge in marriage. Not so much with women. Women step out because, you know, for whatever reason. You know what I'm saying? Shit, it could be the garbage I don't carry out and they, they're upset, so they decide to cheat. It's... it's <laughs> it's it's weird with women okay they're emotional they're all over the place um but i believe that's the real challenge um when it comes on for for men in relationships i think that's the true challenge of staying um faithful to that one woman because we're so inclined to do the opposite you know what i'm saying it's crazy you know the scott fitzgerald story a diamond as big as the ritz no her house is a slightly smaller version of my high school. And I realized why she was so happy all the time and why she was so angry when she didn't get what she wanted. All girls are like that. You are. You don't know that. So different than Tara. Tara's very beautiful, you know that. She doesn't need anything. What she does need, anyone can get her. You're nervous about getting married. You'll see. You don't know what she'll mean to you. Arthur, I like being around you. Don't say anything to ruin that. No. It's just my people are Nordic. My people are Nordic. Man, if you... grateful hey shout out to betty though she ain't going there uh, she just could be pulling him in you never know what these women are thinking when they do stuff and yeah, you you sir are a sight for sore eyes how do you feel about lutess monday night lutess pleased i guess and you get to meet jimmy barrett Oh? Is this one where I talk or I don't talk? You need to charm him. I need you to be shiny and bright. I need a better half. Monday night. Do you have plans? I'll have to find something to wear. We'll go there alone another time. Yeah, I know she was kind of, she, she thought it was just going to be the two of them. Where is he? Who? Jimmy Barrett. I, uh... He wants to apologize. Oh, dear. <laughs> well, he certainly picked a nice place. Betty, this is Bobby and Jimmy Barrett. Oh, my, I am such a fan. You know, when you imagine someone saying that to you, you always hope it's her. <laughs> Do you remember hunting Edith Schilling? How could I forget? They bought me a car. Pleasure as always. And a little lady, look at you, all dolled up. <laughs> <laughs> this man is the epitome so, of a sleaze you, bag, bro. I want to know everything. <laughs> oh. Pew, any chance we can get a drink order filled? Sorry, everybody, but Jimmy's down a quart. Two Johnny Walkers, rocks. Bobby, you want anything? Duvernay, with a twist. Yes, you. 
I make it fast. While well, this place is still French. He is hella rude, oh, you dude. Like Spitting your food. Oh, really? What fills your days? Eating bonbons, hitting tennis balls with the needy. <laughs> He's Actually, laying it on thick. Riding horses. It's really a passion for me. And for them, I bet. I knew that. It's the same kind of saddle, but I do jumping. You two do any jumping? I'm sorry. Can you excuse me a moment? <laughs> Let's talk about horses, huh? You look great. Do I? Mm. I'm not saying <laughs> great. The window for this apology is closing. It needs to happen before the appetizers or they will leave. Really? Because I was thinking about that. So I took a look at Jimmy's contract. Well, me and a lawyer. And I realized Jimmy doesn't have to apologize at all. So what is this all about? I think an apology, and a public one like this one, has to be worth $25,000. And I want it in the paper. Believe me, I will ruin him. Do what I say. Um, okay. <laughs> just, it's like, people just do weird stuff sometimes. It's just like... Don't get up. I wasn't gonna. It's like, do what I say. To me, to the, uh, <laughs> well, I hope we haven't ordered yet because there really is something that we need to get out of the way. <clears throat> Honestly, uh, I'd rather eat your chips than anything in this dump. They have snails here, you know. It's a shilling. Edith, I was out of line the other day. I shouldn't have said it to you, and not just because you're married to him, I shouldn't have said it to anybody. Not in that environment. Sweetheart, look at me. You too, Hunt. Can I call you Hunt? There's the guy under the lights, and there's me. He's made me rich, but he hasn't made me very nice. I know that's what you do. I guess I just don't have the stomach for it. The bygones be bygones, I guess. He was he was definitely out of line. Like, he, as much... It, it, there are situations where stuff like this is, you know, in my opinion, when it comes out to this, because we live in such a... This is a weird, soft place in the West now. You know what I'm saying? Where you can't make fun of fat people. You know what I mean? Time and place. Time, time and place is what I would say. You know what I'm saying? You can't just do that. Like, if you're going to talk to a fat person about their weight and they're getting too heavy, or you're going to joke about it, let that be between you and a person. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like making fun of that person in front of their face, in front of thousands of people. You know what I'm saying? It's, not, it's just not funny. <laughs> it's just it's just not going to come off as funny. You know what I mean? Cause I I you know what I'm saying? If you're overweight like me, I thought to myself, and if people roast me, I don't give a damn about if people want to roast me or not. You know, I have a little stomach, you know what I mean? Um I don't care. But she even though she's well overweight, she's way overweight. She should not be that heavy. You know what I'm saying? But that's just what it is. Um but also, if they know that Sawi is, and they know that he dishes it out heavy like that, um, why even be upset about it? You know what I'm saying? But I get it, though. You know, these people are... Lit. That's that's kind of like you disrespecting your boss or making fun of your boss in front of your face and don't expect to get fired. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Like, it just it's just wrong place, wrong time. Maybe if you were chilling... Maybe if you were chilling somewhere, having a beer with your boss or something like that, you could probably make jokes about their weight. But you just don't do that in 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 <laughs> in the business place. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just you you just don't do that. You know what I mean? What is she crying for? That's you, right? Nothing at all. I've had this conversation so much in my life. I just. I, <laughs> You're happy? When I said I wanted to be a, a 
part of your life. This is what we <laughs> You make a great team. But you weren't even happy to go. Alright, so that was Mad Men Season 2, Episode 3, man. I'm loving this series. Um, this episode more dealt with, you know, more than anything what I take out of this episode or the situation that's going on with, um, I don't even remember his name right now, but you guys know what I'm talking about. Dude that's trying to get a raise, see somebody make it. I actually had a very similar situation one time. Um, but this wasn't like, it's so funny how this stuff I'm watching in the show right now. And I've just recently was talking about this stuff because I talk about a lot of things on my streams before I, before I actually start watching the show that I'm watching on stream. And I usually have this small section, you know, you know, at the beginning of the stream, like, you know, 30 to 45 minutes of me just talking about stuff and stuff, and, you know, stuff that's just on my mind and stuff like that. Mind you, it's not to a lot of people because not a lot of people come to my streams, but it is what it is. Um, you know, and I was literally just talking about this very same scenario about this one time when I found out what my boss made. This was when I was working, when I was doing construction and I found out what my boss actually gets paid to do the jobs and how much he was paying me. You know what I'm saying? And I was livid. Actually, I quit i quit the job not long after that because i realized this guy he, he, he didn't value me as an employee and i did not i did not i i was tired of doing construction in general and it from this is literally the only job i've ever quit ever in my life like i'm talking about quit i've never been fired for any job um from i've never been fired from any job every job that i've taken when i'm talking about retail or anything like that um i guess you could call leaving a job quit so it's probably not the, the only job that i've ever walked away from i've left other jobs to go work higher paying jobs um before um so i guess you could call that quitting the other job i guess so maybe maybe twice i've done that so everything else have kind of like run its course over time run its you know, and whatever situations come up and not quitting, but getting laid off shit like that is you go through the motions of stuff. But this particular job I left, I actually went on vacation, um, back home in Jamaica that year. And when I came back, I was like, you know what? I'm tired of this. This is bullshit. Cause I was there for a while after I found out about it. Um, actually there's another guy that came in and was working with us at the time. And I was telling him that dude, this dude is not paying us. You get what I'm saying? So I'm just here for a, a little bit more and then I'm, I'm gonna make this money so that I can go on this vacation and then I'm out. Right. I had made my, made my decision that when I came back to the States, I was not going to work for this dude anymore because he doesn't value me as an em employee. You know what I'm saying? Because as a matter of fact, you know, I know some people is going to be like, why didn't you ask him for a raise? I didn't ask him for a raise because I had just previously got a raise. I don't know what the hell I thought that was because it wasn't, it was nothing. You know what I'm saying? This man wasn't running some sort of enterprise or anything like that. It was just me and him working together. He was a subcontractor for a company that does construction, right? So he's essentially, he just gets paid to do jobs right so he would um he knows how to do the job he has somebody that helps him doing which is me so it was just the two of us we go everywhere we're all over the place doing jobs for this company and based on how long the job is going to take that's how they pay him so some jobs will be ten thousand dollars some will be twenty thousand dollars whatever and over the course of the time say for instance the job is only going to take like three maybe four days maybe a week sometimes even two weeks Whatever the situation is throughout that time, that's what I would get paid and I'm getting paid by the hour. And when I worked it out about how much we were paying, how much we were getting paid, how much I was getting paid, I should say, it didn't add up for me. I was making, I was making literally $80 a day, right? I was making, look, look at the, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm, I'm talking about, I'm doing 
as much right i'm doing as much he has to figure most of the stuff out don't get me wrong if you were to say compare comparison to who was more skillful on the job he was the more skillful person on the job no doubt about it never doubted that in my mind one day but i would still say i i had i was doing if he was doing a hundred percent right i was doing 80 percent you get what i'm saying so it's not like i was some sort of scrub that was just handing him tools or something like that i was doing some hard stuff as well so i felt like i was worth more than what he was giving me based on what he was getting paid and i was like if he's paying me a hundred for every hundred i make he's making two thousand i don't think that's fair I didn't think that was fair. So yes, I could have negotiated, but I was tired of doing construction anyway. So I walked away from the job. Uh, mind you, it didn't take me long to find another one, but you know, it is what it is, right? So I do understand where he's coming from, where you gotta know your worth. Um, you gotta know your worth. You can't just sit down, you know what I mean? And just take whatever comes to you, you know, and just accept it. You gotta know what you're worth and negotiate for it he saw an opportunity and they recognized him it was kind of like plot wise it worked out for him so i'm not even gonna say nothing on that um because plot wise it worked out for him um you know they just happened to notice that most of the times you don't get noticed for stuff like that for doing stuff like that they might look at it and be like oh this was a great opportunity whatever anybody could have done it you know what I mean? But I'm glad that he watched and was like, what do you want? Because he, he, he actually took initiative. I mean, what if they never called him into the office? He would have never gotten that raise. You know what I'm saying? If they never called him into the, if, if Sterling didn't call him into the office and said, you know, they, they bothered me about this. So now I got to do something about it. So what do you want? You get what I'm saying? And I think he should have, he should have negotiated just one more time and try to see if he could get 250 because a lot of times, yes, he didn't want him to find out that he knows somebody that makes 300 a week, but you know what I'm saying? He, I think he could have negotiated a little bit more, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, sometimes you, you, you settle too quickly in negotiations and you just got to eat it, but that's just what it is. So that was pretty cool to see them doing something there on the business side of things. And then also with the situation with this Jimmy character that roasted this fat woman, <laughs> roasted her to die kingdom come. As I said, there's a time and a place for everything. You don't just, you know what I mean? Like as much as I don't, I don't, um, condone that kind of thing up, like around me and stuff like that when it comes on to fat people, because my, my, my mom is a heavy set person right and my mom is constantly trying to get her weight down because she realized that she made a lot of those mistakes back in her younger days now i don't make fun of i don't make fun of my mom because i know she's actively trying to get that down now if you're a fat person and you're still just eating 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 you're just eating right and it's like you don't see where you need to stop right if you're getting to that lady's level that's in that's in this thing right if you're getting to that level and your your husband is not saying nothing about it i mean they're, they're literally just waiting for you to die of whatever it is that you have you know what i mean they're just waiting on you to die because i don't think i i don't believe that that's healthy it's just and it's not you get what i'm saying it's not like what my belief is it, being that big is not healthy you know what I'm saying? I'm a little overweight. I still need to to, to be in the range where I need to be from my height and my age. I need to, to drop at least 20 to 30 pounds. And I have accepted that, right? I've accepted that, that I need to do that. And I'm working on it. You know what I'm saying? I'm working on it. So it's a, it's, it's a tough situation. As I said, time and place, it was definitely inappropriate what he did in front of all those people and embarrassing her like that that's it was uncalled for you get what i'm saying like it wasn't like this person was asking for it she just walked in the room and you just started roasting her like you just don't do that to people <laughs> you know what i mean unless you know you're on a comedy set so people know you're being a comedian and you're just being roasted you're just the the new you know you're the what do you call it the new 
you're you're the new person on the block whatever i don't remember the saying but you get you get what i mean it was just inappropriate if you guys disagree with me you can put it in the comment section i just felt like it was inappropriate for him to do that um and yeah he, he ended up having to apologize for it to not lose the business um so don draper had to take charge and he's back to his cheating ways um so i'm i'm i don't know if he actually cheated i mean or he stopped you know what i'm saying i don't know if he actually slept with this woman to be honest they didn't show it we just gonna chalk it up because you know what i mean he's that type of dude so it it would not surprise me if he did so in any case guys thank you guys so much for tuning in as always man i'm gonna see you guys uh, next time for some more Mad Men. don't forget to like don't forget to comment i'm out peace